In this video, we are going to implement smooth scrolling using Frame or Motion. So you can see here on the left, this is going to be the star project we're going to work with. And right now, it's just a list of items. And this has a normal scrolling behavior from the browser. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert the scrolling into the smooth scrolling version, as you can see here using Frame or Motion. So on the right hand side, I have the starter code for this project, which I'll also link down in the description for you to follow along. Nothing too crazy here, just a section with a series of items that I'm mapping through and just outputting an image and some text for each of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on building a wrapping smooth scroll component around all of this that will be pretty abstracted away so that you can go and use the same smooth scroll component we build in any of your own projects going forward. So to start with, let's create this new component in a separate file. So I'm going to go in here and just create a new folder for components. And we'll create a new file here called smooth scroll. Not TSX. Close this. Going to create a new functional component with the Emmet shortcut. We'll call it smooth scroll. And let's just do some basic setting up of this component. The main thing I want to start with is the props. And the main props that we'll be passing in are just some other React nodes, some other components that will be the children. So for this, let's set that up. So this is going to be a functional component. And the type we'll pass in children of type react.react node. We'll destructure the props here, the constructor. We'll start by just being able to pass it in here as children. And now let's just quickly go and add this new component to the main content. So I'm just going to surround this whole thing with smooth scroll. I want to hit save. Nothing changes on the left, which is good because it should just be directly passing through the content. OK, so now that's all that set up. So now we can primarily focus our time here in this new component. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up the structure of this component. And it's going to be a slightly more intricate than just passing the children through. So what we're going to do is let me just delete this. I will just make this a generic component surrounding the return. And we're actually going to include two divs actually here in this component. And this one will be pretty simple. The second one is where we will pass in the children. But the first one we're going to use to help initiate the scroll. So how this is going to work is the actual div that has the children, the actual content, we're going to make this a position fixed so that it disables scrolling on all the children elements. And so just to quickly see that, what we can do here is pass a class name here. And let's just first just apply some styling. And we'll fix this in a second here. But you'll notice I'm trying to scroll. And now scrolling has been turned off, even though there's obviously more content that we can see down below. To turn back scrolling on, that's where this empty div is going to come in. And we're just going to set the height of this div to match the height of the content in children to re-enable scrolling and get the full scrolling back in. And the reason we're doing this is because in order to customize the scrolling behavior, we have to disable essentially the default scrolling and override it with our own custom scrolling. So let's just quickly clean this up a little bit with the styling. Uh, in addition to fixed and top zero, I'm going to give it a width of screen, flex, flex call, and then now, OK, now the children are showing up as normal again. So now let's go ahead and set this height properly correctly for this div to get the scrolling back again. So for this, I'm going to set up a ref at the top so that we can capture the height information. So I'm just going to put a comment here, get height information that we need. So first, I'm going to set up a ref. We we'll use, use ref. And this will be of type HTML div element. Initially, it will be null. I'm then going to attach this ref to this second div here, where we have the children that we're passing in, content ref. So now we have access to this div directly. So now we can try to pull the height of this content. But we can't just do this off the bat for two reasons. One is that originally this ref is going to be null, so it's not even attached yet. And secondly, we need to wait until this div fully loads in to be able to calculate correctly what is the height of the content. There's another part as well here, which is if the window resizes at any given point, that can also change the behavior because things might get squished horizontally, for example which will increase the height of the content. And so that will all be dynamic. So we need to keep track of all this. 
For that, we're going to encapsulate all of the logic for getting this information in the use effect, but we're going to store these in a couple of variables. So let's create those variables first. So first, I'm going to get one for content height. And we'll use a use state. Initially, we set to zero. I'm also going to set up a state variable for the window height as well. And this is going to come in handy, actually, when we start setting up some of the scrolling behavior and overriding the default scrolling behavior. Now we will set up some things in the use effect. And in this use effect, I'm going to define a function here called handle resize. And this is simply just going to say, this will get triggered whenever there's a resize. And at this point, let's just get the latest values for content height and window height and set them. So we'll say if content ref dot current, so the current value of the ref, is not no, then let's set the content height to be content ref dot current dot scroll height. And then outside this if statement, let's also set the window height to window dot inner height. So this is just the inner height of the actual window of the browser. Let's also on this use effect, set the dependencies here for content ref so that also this will trigger whenever content ref changes for example during first paint and when we attach this ref to this div we need to manually call handle resize the first time and then we're going to set up some listeners for when the window resizes to then recall this function and get the latest value so for that we'll say window dot event listener or listen for the resize event and when that happens, have it run handle resize. And because we're adding an event listener and for good hygiene and the use effect, we should also handle the case when we need to remove this window element. So window dot remove event listener will remove the event listener that we just created. Again, for good hygiene and to prevent memory leaks as well. Okay, and then finally, let's go ahead and attach this content height to this div here. And so for this, I'm just gonna use a style tag to do that, and we'll set the height to be content height. And when I hit save, and if I try to sc start scrolling, you'll actually notice that the scroll bar now is there. And we can't see this visually obviously yet, because right now what's scrolling is this div, which is empty and has no content at all, so we don't visually see anything but we can see that we're getting the correct scrolling back here with the scroll bar. So next, let's set up our custom scroll behavior to override the default one. So the first thing we're gonna do is intercept the normal scroll progress of this shadow div, let's call it, that we're using. And we're gonna override this scroll logic and progress velocity and acceleration and stuff using frame or motion. So let's go here after the use effect. And we're going to intercept the normal scroll behavior. So just put a quick comment for that. So for this, we're going to use the use scroll hook from Frame or Motion. And we're specifically going to pull out this scroll y progress value that we can use. This is the default scroll progress, which is going to typically be a value from 0 to 1, where 0 is when it scrolls at the very top, and 1 is when you're at the very end of scrolling. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the behavior a little bit of this default scroll y progress. And we're going to use a spring sort of animation hook to do that. So in tandem with scroll by progress, I'm going to create a new variable called smooth progress. And this is going to use use spring. And it will take scroll by progress and it will transform it in a certain way to follow a certain different type of, again, velocity and acceleration behavior. And this is going to use some spring values. So I'm just going to pass some here, a mass of 0.1, stiffness of 100, a damping of 20, and the rest delta of 0 0.001. So this is the kind of smooth scroll version of how we want the progress to be. But now we need to translate this into something which we can use to actually scroll our actual content. So for this, we're going to convert this into a Y value, a Y position that should correspond with each value of smooth progress. So we'll say const Y is, and we'll use use transform from framework motion. It takes in smooth progress, and it'll convert the value of smooth progress, which is again from zero to one. And we're gonna have it return the actual absolute positioning that corresponds to that scroll value. So in this case, it'll be the value times minus of 
content height minus window height, right? So it's negative because we need to set the Y to be negative, which means pushing the content up. And then the window height minus content height, of course, would be telling you how much needs to be pushed up because we're, we've made some progress on the whole page. So this is the value value that we need to use. So now let's go ahead and attach it to our content here. And for this, we will use a style tag here as well. And we'll just set Y equal to Y. And now you'll see an error. And this is because it's saying you're passing a motion value to this component and it doesn't know what that means. So what we need to do is convert this into a motion div so it actually understands motion values and can utilize this. And then let's import motion. Now if I hit save, Okay, so you can already see for a second there some scrolling happening. And now if I start scrolling, look at that. We, we're getting the scrolling that we want. And you even notice that it's already bringing some of that smooth scrolling in now because of this use spring that we're using to transform the normal scroll wide progress. With that, we've technically kind of gotten smooth scrolling working here, but there's a couple of other things I want to do to clean this up because it's not perfect just yet. So the first thing that you'll notice actually is that there seems to be a bit of a visual disconnect now between the scrolling of the actual content and this scroll bar on the right. Like you'll notice, especially if I go really quick, right? Like there'll be moments where the scroll bar has stopped moving, but the content is still moving. And that's because remember, the scroll bar is actually for this div up here, which we haven't touched it at all, right? So it still has the normal linear scrolling behavior, but we obviously, for this content, we're applying a different sort of override to the scroll. So the easiest thing that we're going to do here is just hide the scroll bar altogether. So there's no mismatch to begin with. And to do that is actually pretty straightforward. What we'll do is simply add some global CSS styles to hide the scroll bar. And so here I'm just going to say HTML. So in the overall HTML capsuling element of this entire page, make sure it's that overflow or to scroll. And then I'll simply say here, I'll look for the WebKit scroll bar content selector. And you can simply say width should be zero, height should be zero, and background should be transparent. And now if we try scrolling again, you'll notice that the scroll bar has disappeared altogether. So just a small detail that I think helps with this effect. Now there's another issue here with the current implementation that will become apparent when I refresh the page. And it's this initial animation that happens with the content. It's almost like the content's loading in already scrolled down a little bit and it's animating towards a scroll progress value of zero. This is definitely not something that we'd want. And it's a little bit tricky actually to figure out what's going on here, but working through this, it seems like from everything I can gather that this is coming from the default behavior of this use spring animation hook. It's animating to the scroll Y progress of zero from some other state on the time of loading. I have been playing around with all these parameters and haven't been able to find a way to disable this initial behavior. I think this is a little bit just inherent to the spring animation, how it works. So instead, we're going to do a couple of things to effectively force this to not happen. And we're going to do this by only activating the transform value that we have here, only when we know for a fact that the position of the content is at zero. So initially, we know for a fact it will start at zero, and only then will we essentially turn on this use transform, which therefore means turning on this use spring only at that point. So for that, we are going to first grab a variable at the top here that we'll set up and we'll just call it is loading here. And we'll, you know, the idea of calling this is loading is to say like, hey, wow, this is like during this initial weird like spring animation phase, like we'll call that almost a loading state. And so based on that loading state completing essentially once it's reset to zero properly, then we can do stuff. So set the state variable is loading, we'll set equal to true to begin with. And then next up, Let's go down to this style tag here where we're setting the Y positioning. And let's just modify this a little bit. And let's actually say we should only use this value of Y, which again is using the use transform, if we have said that the page has fully loaded. And so we'll say for this Y value, y value we'll say if is, is loading is true, then just set this Y to zero. Just set this at the very top. Otherwise, use this dynamic value of Y. And so now what this will do is if I hit refresh, 
okay, we've gotten rid of this initial weird animating to the top, but now I can't scroll anymore because we've essentially turned off this dynamic value of Y because we haven't updated is loading yet to anything. So let's do that now. So for that, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially watch the value of smooth progress. And when it equals zero, we will then say, okay, you've animated fully to zero. And therefore we have kind of fully loaded in the page and your animation, initial animation is done. And so now we can go and do all the other stuff we want. So for that, we are going to grab a hook called use motion value event from frame or motion. We're going to watch specifically the smooth progress motion value. We're going to watch the change event. So whenever the value of this smooth progress changes, and we'll take the current value of it and we'll say, if this value is equal to zero, then we'll set is loading to false. Now, technically speaking, we might say like, oh, we only want this to run the first time when this happens, right? But in reality, it actually doesn't matter because even if we, you know, scroll down and scroll back up and this gets triggered again, it's just going to trigger and set is loading to false again, which is not going to change anything. So it's actually fine to just leave this as it is. And so now if I refresh the page, okay, we'll notice that we still are staying at the very top through the loading. And if I scroll now, we have our scrolling back. Now, there is one edge case bug here, which is if I try to start scrolling immediately after the page loads, but we are still kind of in the background doing this animation on the spring at the beginning, we may never get to a latest value of zero and it breaks this whole thing. So just to see, I'm just going to refresh and then quickly start scrolling. And this is a little bit difficult to see. So let me actually disable the scroll bar hiding for a second and let's try this one more time. So if I refresh and I start scrolling, you'll see I'm starting to scroll immediately, but now the page is stuck. It's completely stuck. And the only way I can get it unstuck is essentially to get it to the very top so that we get to a latest value of zero for smooth progress. And then this gets triggered and then we actually start to get this dynamic Y value. And so to help control this, and let me just hide the scroll bar again. We're going to apply one other visual tactic here, which is we will only visually show the content once we have confirmed essentially that the loading is complete. We have gotten to a value of zero on smooth progress and we have the behavior going forward we expect. For this, we're going to keep it pretty simple and we're just going to set opacity values. So we'll say for the opacity, if we're still loading, opacity will be zero, else opacity will be one. And so what this will do is if I refresh the page, Okay, it only loads once we know is loading is, is false, which is when, again, we get to a smooth progress value of zero. And so now I can immediately start scrolling without issue. I can try this one more time. If I refresh and immediately start scrolling, it's all working. And then one final thing, just to make this a little bit nicer, is let's transition this opacity. So it doesn't just immediately come on screen. So transition opacity, duration of 200, and ease in and out. And if I refresh the page, Nicely will fade in and the scrolling works now as expected. So with that, we've implemented smooth scrolling with frame erosion and have even tackled a couple of edge cases. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. And on screen now is another video for you to check out next, and I'll see you in the next video.